right, so let me make sure I can see who's here. And, and again, once it, if you have some uh, chat that you want to, you know, I'm going to ask for people to write in the chat, certainly, but then um, if you have some questions, you can write them in the chat, too. Okay, so once again, I am Allison Scola, the owner and curator of Experience Sicily. Thank you for joining me tonight for Let's Dream of Traveling to Sicily, and it's going to be a whole presentation of why you want to go there, why you want to go to Sicily. Um, so first question is, who has been to Sicily? Have you been to Sicily? So I'm going to launch a poll and uh, you can type in your answer, yes or no. Have you been to Sicily? Let's see what the results are here. So I'll give you a few seconds to answer. Right now, no is winning, very much so. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna last chance to enter your response. Have you been to Sicily? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, end the poll. All right, so uh, I hope you can see that, but I will tell you that 15% of you have been to Sicily and 85% of you have not been to Sicily. So that's great for me to know. It helps me uh, understand who I'm talking to tonight. Um, all right, so then let's see here. All right, so I just want to tell you a little bit about me and what we do at Experience Sicily, okay? So we do small group tours and custom creative itineraries for independent travelers. Um, we also do custom small group itineraries for tours that I manage or um, I'm the tour leader, or also I have colleagues in Sicily that will be the tour leader for you. And we have one person on tonight who's I'm going to be doing that for with for for her family and close loved ones. Um, we also help people with heritage research and experiences. Generally, they come to me with some information and and let me take it from there. I like to get you into the village where you might be from, your, where your ancestors came from and give you some uh, introduction to that village. And maybe, just maybe, if there's a possibility of a living relative, we might be able to connect you with a living relative. It's possible. It's been done. It's, ha it's happened. Um, professional consultation on an itinerary that you plan and execute yourself. So, for example, Olympia on the call tonight, that's something that she's doing, and, and Nancy as well. So there's a couple people on the call tonight that are doing that. And uh, I do a cannoli crawl, a food history walking tour in New York City. And I'll explain that at the end. And I also do stateside gatherings and online Sicily inspired events like this one and lectures, articles, and daily insights. So if you follow me on Instagram at Experience Sicily or on Facebook, I have an Experience Sicily page there and uh, you can follow me on Twitter. So you'll see some, some information about Sicily every a few, every day, every few days now. I have I used to do it every day, but now I'm so overwhelmed. So we're just doing it a few times a week now. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, in Sicily, this is where I'm from. This is Capo de Ferrano. This is uh, I shouldn't say I'm from here. I'm from New York. I'm from New Jersey. However, um, my family came from Porticello, and this is Capo de Ferrano, which is a major. Um, point of reference in Porticello. My grandfather uh, was from there, my grandmother from Bagheria. And this is Evelina, who is my cousin, and she is my right arm in Sicily in terms of uh, helping me book things and getting information for me. Uh, we are deeply embedded in the island in terms of our knowledge and our connections, our, our web of contacts there. So um, we can find it if we are asked to find it. Um, furthermore, I just have uh, uh, taken on um, two other local insiders, Giuseppe Schurka and Valeria Sonierino. Um, they are now also helping me on the Sicily side of things in terms of helping me book and uh, reserve things for our clients over there. Um, also here in the States, I have help from Anna Scola, who is our, our project coordinator, and Elizabeth Uppenbrink, who is our, our client services manager. So we have a team growing um, here as well to make sure that um, you know, we're getting everybody uh, 
a service as much as we can. All right. Yes. Holy White Lotus Heritage Assistance. Exactly. <laughs> A very good point you make because this is exactly the thing you do not want to show up in a town uh without having had some introduction um you know because would you like it if someone just knocked on your door and told you <laughs> right so no sicilians don't want that to happen either you need somebody who can uh do that introduction for you ahead of time and that's one of the things we we try and do so um and here's a, just an idea of my family in Sicily uh, and some friends with me. This is my birthday a few years ago. So I have a, a big gaggle of relatives there that I absolutely love and are an important part of my life. So um, so here you go. All right. So, of course, you know, I see John is already commenting. And I want to ask you, do you have Sicilian heritage? If you haven't been to Sicily or going to Sicily, do you have Sicilian heritage? And from what town did your family originate to? From um, so write it in the chat. I'm curious to see. You know this this picture is my grand my um I think my grandmother took this picture actually. But my grandfather is the the guy holding the baby. The baby is my uncle Steve. Uh, this picture was taken in the uh, well. Uncle Steve was born in 1938, so it had to have been about 1938 or 39 because he looks like he's about six months old or eight months old. So um, this is a fan fantastic photo of uh, my my grandfather, my grandmother in a picnic, probably on Long Island, is what I'm guessing. So so John, maybe those trees behind them look familiar to you. Um, so you know, going to the beach. So I see Calta Bellotta, Santana. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. I love Calta Bellotta and Santana. It's beautiful. Um, my grandmother made me arancini when I was little, but she's from Poland. All right, Kenny. Well, you know, that's amazing that she made you arancini. And my family's from Bari. Okay, Olympia. But, you know, it's all Southern Italy. So you'll feel, you'll feel it in your DNA when you go there. San Buca di Sicilia and San Fratello. San Fratello, yes, Nancy, we, we know that. You're going to be going there um, when you when you visit in April, May, which is very cool. And I see John again, Castel Voltrano, which is getting a lot of attention today because of the mafioso boss that was caught. Castel <laughs> Voltrano, I'm sure you all heard the international news of this uh this head of the, one of the families was finally caught after 30 years, and he was outside of uh, Casa Voltrano in an apartment uh, hiding out. Uh, Lipari, wow, Stephanie, that's pretty cool. Lipari is a really a beautiful place to have heritage from. And let's see, um, what else do we have? Kenny Zuckerberg, no Sicilian heritage for me. Well, you can be honorary, Kenny, okay? <laughs> All right. And Casa Bellotta again. Awesome. Glasgow. Is that Sicilian? It can be, Barbara. You know, it's all what you want it to be. And we have, of course, Marianne from Palermo and Val Co Caro Pepe. And I'm looking forward to going there. That is a town I've never been to. So I'm looking forward to seeing a place I've never been in Sicily. So as you can see, we have people from um, all different kind of parts of the island, actually, east and west, etc. So um, and they're all a little different, East and Western Sicily. All right, so let's see what else we got here. So tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, a few things, right? So we have um, why Sicily is spectacular. I think some of you have seen White Lotus. So now maybe, maybe you're interested because you saw White Lotus and you're thinking this place is spectacular. I need to go there. Uh, the highlights of what a Sicily tour might engage in, entail, when to visit, uh, best way to navigate the island or how to navigate the island. Um, the ideal visit length is also uh, something we'll discuss. And making your trip remarkable, what makes a ship, trip to Sicily really remarkable, and an introduction to Sicilian cuisine, which is its own thing altogether. So I hope that is helpful to give you a little agenda. So let's give you a little orientation. Sicily, of course, is the, the island at the toe of the boot of Italy. Um, it is the largest island in the Mediterranean. And to give you a sense of how big it is, for in our case, it is the size of Massachusetts. So if you know the size of Massachusetts, that gives you an idea. And I want you to imagine 
if you were traveling in Massachusetts, right, and you were in Boston one day and you wanted to get to Cape Cod, right, and Cape Cod is not so simple to, to navigate because there's one highway, right, going in and out of the, out of the Cape. And then if you wanted to get to Lenox to go to Tanglewood for a concert, it's a few hours <laughs> on I-90, right? So these are not things you can do easily meaning getting from the tip of Cape Cod to Lenox to go to Tanglewood or Jacob's Pillow, right? So um, add in a few mountain ranges in the middle of that and you understand how hard it is to navigate Sicily because also we don't have in Sicily fantastic autostradas. There's a couple, uh, there's one along the, the northern coastline and there's one going down the eastern coastline, which is from Messina down to Siracusa. And there is an awful one cutting through the island, whole <laughs> one. So getting from Catania to Palermo is about two hours and 45 minutes to three hours. And the road is in terrible shape. They're doing construction on it and you just never know what counter. So anyway, it's kind of thing where you, when you're driving there, you need to roll with it. So just to give you an idea of the size of Sicily here is a picture for you to see. So here we are. It is in the middle of the Mediterranean. And what does that mean? It means that we have influences coming from uh, east and west and everywhere in between north and south, right? So I'm going to take you through a little history tour right now so that you understand, because to understand modern Sicily, you also need to understand um, ancient history, because ancient history has a lot to do with even how things are today. So when you're talking about where uh, ancient in ancient times, you see how close Greece is. So Greece is really close. You get in a boat and you're going to hit southern Italy and definitely the east coast of Sicily. So even today, you could see uh, the ancient Greek ruins uh, are, are very uh, prevalent on that eastern coastline and the influence of that mindset of the Greek culture of being very, um, very uh, sophisticated and having lots of, um, they're very civilized. And even, you know, Catanae, Katane, say people will even sort of act this way still. All right. So meanwhile, uh, you have the also the influence of the, uh, the, the Carthaginians, okay? So the Phoenicians that came from what is now modern day uh, Lebanon and Jordan and Israel, that area of the world. So they came and they were extremely uh, excellent mariners and navigators and boat builders. And so they traversed the Mediterranean and then they were able to take over Western Sicily. So Sicily, obviously, even today is extremely strategic in terms of controlling the Mediterranean, right? So you can see that the, the, the ancient Phoenicians who became Carthaginians, they Tunis, if you can see Tunis here, um, that is where the head of Carthage was, right, um, was Carthage. So Sicily was really split in the middle between or between the western part of Sicily being Carthaginian or very North African influence still because you see how close it is to Tunisia, Algeria, okay, Morocco's not too far away. Spain is very close also by sea. This is the super highway of its day was the sea. So that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about the culture. And when you're talking about looking back in time in these places where you know where what look at the look at the Carthaginian empire it's all in that blue right if you can see that blue so you can see how western sicily was very carthaginian and that whole african north african coast and southern spanish coast and then if you look on the the, the eastern side of the island or or the the right side of this slide you can see all of the orange is greek and how much the Greeks were all along all the coasts on the east side. So you can imagine in back in 500 BCE, or actually BCE because it's before Common Era, um, this these two civilizations were very, very powerful and, and very much um, at odds with each other. And that's a huge part of the Sicilian history too because they were fighting over resources on Sicily, which was a very resource rich place. So 
stemming back to that, but still going forwards, I think we need to look at a couple other important dates here that I think will help you understand Sicily. Um, the Romans begin their campaign for Sicily in 264 BCE and finally conquer the island, finally do the full conquering. So it took 50 some odd years, okay? It wasn't so simple. The Carthaginians and the Greeks really put up a fight to the Romans. Um, but by 210 or 214 BCE, the Romans are fully in power in Sicily. And they're not really our favorite people if you talk to Sicilians <laughs> because they subjugated Sicilians. And so there was a whole interesting story about that. But one of the biggest sites in Sicily is the Roman villa of Casale. And that Roman villa is... Uh, you know, a really interesting UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I'll talk to you about that a bit. But then you can see how going through history, we have uh, the Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire in 380 CE. So now we're in the Common Era. And then you've got a period of Vandals, Goths, Ostrogoths. Uh, this is the Germanic peoples that come from the north. We like to call them barbarians because they did not speak a Greek or Latin language. So anyone who does not speak a Greek or Latin based language is a barbarian. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things to tell you is bar, bar, bar is what they used to say in ancient Greece when you're saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he went to the market and he bought fruit and yogurt and milk and blah 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 right well blah 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 in ancient greece was bar 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 and so what did that become barbarian anyone who spoke blah bar bar <laughs> so that's kind of a fun fact so then you get through the byzantines come in it's a very stoic period a religious period and then we have the arab period starting in about 827 this is a fantastic more advanced culture coming in very different from islam okay i don't want you to confuse the two although muslim is a religion at the at that point but it, the arab culture in sicily at this time was very advanced scientific and brought a lot of interesting things irrigation for one uh lots of citrus very important is sugar cane we love them for bringing the sugar cane and lots of other, uh, you know, they brought mulberry trees and had a silk industry. They had rice and rice patties. So the Arabs really brought a lot. Of course, the Vatican hated having non-Christians in Sicily. And so when the Normans showed themselves as being a, a, a real military power and they were living in southern Italy and Puglia at the time, the, the Vatican sort of gave them a, a carte blanche and said, go, go, go to Sicily. We want to Christianize Sicily. And so by about 1061, we have the Normans uh, beginning to conquer uh, Sicily and then by by uh you know not far after that in the 1060s late 1060s they have finished um their conquering of sicily and we have a whole arab norman kingdom we like to call it and it's a fascinating period of time a very a renaissance for sicily in so many ways and then through marriages and through um various uh palace intrigue let's say you have a whole series of Angevin French and, and Spanish Aragonese and Bourbon Spanish and uh, English mixed in there constantly and French a little bit because the Normans are still somewhat influenced by German as well through marriages. And then we have 1860 comes um, after we have the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. And that's important to know too because the Kingdom of Two Sicilies is really, really uh, a very powerful, rich kingdom. And then in 1861, the Italian, uh, the new Italian go government was established, the new Italian kingdom. Um, anyway, that's a lot of, lot of information. Let's let's go. Amuni is going to be your word of the day. Amuni, if you can say that, Amuni, um, that means let's go in Sicilian. So we speak Sicilian a little bit here. All right, so here is your map of Sicily. So if you have been watching White Lotus and you have seen that, you can see Taramina up here in the corner and then you have um, Mount Etna taking up a lot of space and Catania, Syracusa, Nocto is very well known. Enna is our belly button. Palermo is in the west, Agrigento in the south. And then we have Erice, Trapani, and Marsala. So I'm gonna go through all of this for you. So let's see. We have, here's our map. So you can see some of the highlights in terms of the, the uh, Highlights in terms of tourism. All right. So 
Let's see, Sicily boasts how many UNESCO World Heritage Sites? So UNESCO World Heritage Sites are recognized by the UN Foundation for the, the Patrimony of Humanity. That is the idea of a UNESCO site. And so my question for you is, um, how many sites are in Sicily? Sicily has the most UNESCO World Heritage Sites, by the way, than any other region of Italy. So just know that. I'm going to go through a few places, and then at the end, I'm going to ask you, which do you think are and aren't UNESCO Heritage Sites? So pay attention. So here we have Valley of the Temples. This is an ancient Greek site. Uh, it, it boasts actually seven temples, but usually people see about three or four of them on their tour of Valley of the Temples. So this is in Agrigento. So Agrigento is here in the south. And that, in fact, was the first UNESCO World Heritage Site ever appointed in 1997. So then we have, as I mentioned, the Villa Romana del Casale. You might be familiar with this image of the bikini girls, we like to call them. This is our first uh, documentation of the bikini existing, <laughs> but actually they're not on the beach. They're actually working out and they're in an athletic competition. We call this, it was a palestra in the, in the, in the villa, which really is a, an estate. It's a plantation. I'd like you to think of it like a plantation because I think that's more appropriate for us to imagine. Um, so this was one of the, the workout rooms and the, it's the room of the 10 maidens actually. And they're having a, an athletic competition. And I love this because I have I have her on my on my desk as a as a, <laughs> I put my water on her every day. So I'm working out and I'm drinking water and just <laughs> so here is the Villa Romana is here in Piazza Marina in Enna in the middle of Sicily. It's in the hinterland. It's surrounded by wheat fields. And so knowing that it's surrounded by wheat fields gives you the impression of that it is a plantation. Then, of course, we have Mount Etna. Here's a view from the west looking at Mount Etna. In the foreground, we have pistachio trees because pistachio is a big, big nut that we uh, have in Sicily. Actually, it's a fruit, but we'll tell it, we'll call it a nut for the sake of uh, ease. Um, and Mount Etna is covered with snow in this picture, and she does get covered with snow. She's covered with snow now. Um, and so there, there is a thing you can ski in the morning on it and swim in the sea in the afternoon if you're if you're hitting it on the right day. It's very possible. It's a little cold to swim in that that day, but certainly it's possible. And so here is Etna, and it's hard to explain just how massive Etna is and how influential it is in the island um, in terms of the eastern side. It is so present. She's always there. She's always present. Um, and even if you can't see her because she's shrouded in, in uh, smoke and clouds, she is there for sure. And you'll see how prominent she is when you're traveling there. Um, then we have Palermo in Montreal Cathedral. This is the cloister of Montreal. This is the uh, Arab Norman architectural style. So you, it really feels very North African, almost Middle Eastern. Uh, this is uh, an inlaid volcanic rock, actually, making these designs above the arches there. It's a beautiful um, thing to see in person. And all these are mosaic tiles, all of these stars. This is gold-plated um, uh, so, you know, with glass. It's a gold leaf, rather, I should say. Gold leaf with a glass over it. That's how they make those, those mosaic tiles. So Montreal is a fascinating, beautiful place to visit. And here is another view of one of these Arab Norman cathedrals. This is actually Chefalu. And you can see one side by side the mix of the architectural styles. So we have the Arab Norman style, the very Byzantine. It almost looks like St. Mark's in Venice, right? And then you have closer to us in the foreground, a Baroque style archway here. So it's crazy how over the centuries, all these things started mixing and you can see them. So that's, this is Chifalu. Um, and then of course we have uh, another view of a similar uh, mosaic. This is the, the chamber of Roger II, who is my favorite Norman king. And so the lions of course are very important for the Norman kings. Um, all right, so here's Palermo. So you can see Chefalu and Palermo and Montreal Cathedral in that same region. So to give you an idea, we are traveling around the island. This is Catania. Look at the Baroque, how different Catania is, right? And this cathedral is for Santa Agata. Um, it's the Basilica of Santa Agata, in fact. And then it also has 
black lava stone and white um, limestone. So you'll see that contrast in the architectural style. You can see it here too in this palazzo behind the, the cathedral. So you'll see all of these styles around Sicily. It's really an architectural wonder to visit the island. And there is Catania on the right side on the east coast. And again, it's very Greek influence. Then we have Ragusa Ibla, which is one of the uh, Baroque towns in southeastern Sicily. This is um, absolutely beautiful place to visit. And so are Modica and Chicli and Palazzo Acreide and Caltagirone. There are nine towns that are in a UNESCO site. I'm giving my secrets away. Um, they were built in this style after a very, very powerful set of earthquakes. We were actually in the cell, we we're, we're commemorating these earthquakes. So they happened in January 1693. And so these earthquakes had a huge impact on this region and in the 1700s then started this whole architectural style of the late Sicilian Baroque. And you can see it in Ragusa and Modica and Chicli and Caltagirone, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is down in this region here. Uh, and you can see that Ragusa is also well known for having oil. <laughs> they actually did fracking in Ragusa for much of the 20th century. And so that's why you have this oil rig looking thing here in Ragusa. So that's a very interesting um, part of the history of that town and, and its economics too. And of course, Siracusa. Okay, so this is the Piazza Duomo in Siracusa. Again, more Baroque, beautiful architecture. And on the left here is the Duomo, but if you look closely when you're in the Duomo, it is actually the foundation of the, this Duomo and the columns in this Duomo are from the Temple of Athena. So the the, the guts of this cathedral or uh, Duomo, the guts of it are an ancient Greek temple to Athena. It's pretty cool. So that's something to look for when you're in there. And then we have Pantelica. Pantelica now we would call like a nature reserve, um, but it is a limestone shelf that has a gorge, basically. It's a uh, some uh, a canyon, really. There's, a, there's rivers that have cut through a limestone shelf that is part of the African tectonic plate, guys. Like, can I explain just how cool this is in terms of, you got geology. <laughs> We've got so much history, so much, so much interesting stuff. So hiking through Pantelica is very interesting. And part of why it's it's so historically important is because like you're looking at this what window. This is actually a tomb. There are thousands and thousands of tombs in built into the side of the limestone uh, shelf in, in the canyons. And they are from 12,000 BCE, some of these tombs. So there's a, there, most of them are empty. They've been excavated or pill pillaged, but certainly this is a fascinating place to go and hike. And I'll show you a little bit more of that region a little bit later. So this is where Sudacusa is and Pantelica is in that same region as Ragusa. So then we have the Aeolian Islands. Look at where they are <laughs> up in the north. Okay, so the Aeolian Islands are part of this whole Etna volcanic uh, line that goes down to Malta and then up through to Vesuvius, outside of Naples, of course. Seven Aeolian Islands make up this archipelago, and um, Stromboli is probably your most famous one if you know about this volcano. It's a volcano that's constantly erupting Stromboli, so it's pretty cool. Um, so Stromboli is quite a beautiful place to visit as are all of these islands so you don't need to go to Greece guys you can come to Sicily and <laughs> you can get Greece the Greek islands you can get in Sicily too so people often say to me oh, I'm going to do Greece and Sicily and I say why just come to Sicily we have everything <laughs> don't work so hard you don't need to work so hard and switch countries just come to Sicily and and we'll 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 appease all of your desires for your European trip in one island okay this size of Massachusetts. And then of course there's Selenute. Selenute is another amazing ancient Greek site. Uh, it's in southwestern Sicily in Trapani province. It is, you can walk right into these temples, um, very different from Valley of the Temples, which is, is uh, there's a lot of fencing preventing you from going onto the temples. Here in Selenunte, you can actually walk into the temples. This is a town, it's a full town. So it's a very large space, a space where um, all of the ruins of the, these temples are in Selenunte. And so here it is in the west, southwestern corner of Selenunte. And then of course, 
of course, we have Taramina, which is getting its its moment here now. We we it had a moment in 2017 also because the G8 conference was hosted there. So all the world leaders were in Taramina for that that big conference. Um, however, you know, now with White Lotus, everyone's talking about Taramina. And so here we have Issa Labelle. The views from Taramina are amazingly beautiful. Um, and you can see the turquoise sea below. Taramina is on the top of Monte, Ta Monte Tauro, okay? And uh, uh, Monte Tauro, and, and it was a fantastic uh, place to, to be safe during times when there were lots of uh, pirates coming or Arabs, <laughs> whatever was, whatever you wanted to protect yourself from. It's a, it's a medieval city, so it has a city wall. And so it has the Porta Messina and the Porta Catania, Porta Messina being the north side of town and Porta Catania being the south side of town. And so these two, these two reference points um, help you go through the Corso Umberto, which is the main strip where all the shops and the, the boutiques are and the cafes. It's really a resort town. So people, again, they say to me, oh, you know, we want to we want to go to the Amalfi Coast and to Sicily. And I say, you don't need to do both. You can go to Taramina and you'll have the Amalfi Coast in Taramina also. Don't get on another plane. <laughs> So, uh, and I saw Tom just signed in. Tom's coming with me um, on our Enchanting Sicily tour in May. And we start with a prelude here in Taramina and also our Stunning Sicily, which is in October. We stay in Taramina for three nights at the beginning of that tour. And I'll get into those details soon. And here, of course, is the ancient Greek, or no, sorry, it's actually just the ancient theater because we're looking at Roman or a uh, construction that was put onto the ancient Greek theater that is in Taramina. And if you look in the in the top of this photo, Etna is there fuming in the distance. So it's pretty amazing to sit in this amphitheater. You are in the audience of the amphitheater right now, and you are looking at the sea on one side, and you're looking at Mount Etna on the other side while you're listening to the music or the opera, whatever is being presented. They still do concerts here in the summer. Um, Il Volo, the three young tenor guys, for example, they do concert usually once a year. Their rock concerts, I saw Elton John here in 2003, uh, a three-hour concert, just him and his piano. It was amazing. Um, so lots of uh, international artists come through as well as Italians, and they also do some opera performances and, and have orchestral performances. It really depends on um, you know, what, what the program for the season is. So it's always a good idea to check that schedule, you know, just go Google, you know, Taramina, um, music concerts, June, 2023, whatever, whenever you're going and see what the schedule might be. So again, there is Taramina up in the upper Northeast corner. So we have taken a big trip around Sicily. And now my question for you is, which one of these, of these places we just went through is not a UNESCO site? So I'm gonna launch a poll here and you're gonna see how what your knowledge is. Oops, 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 hold on, let me launch it again. Can I relaunch? Yes, okay. So yes, I want to continue. All right, so I pressed the button too fast. So here you go, can you see that everyone? Which of these is not a UNESCO designated site? All right, this is a trick question because there's a, there's actually two answers to this. Um, so you can you can answer your question, which of these is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site? But you get the sense of how many there are, what is possible on this island um, to see and do and, and just uh, how important it is in our human history. So take a couple seconds left. Still some answers coming in. Be sure to scroll down because it's uh, the answers go, you know, if you if you even pull the window down, it's uh, the answers go lower. Okay, I have 80% participation. Last five seconds, people. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and we will see what you say here. All right, let's see what the answers are. So we have a tie. Okay, Taramina is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 29% of people say that. Okay, good. And then we have a tie between Aeolian Islands and Mount Etna as not being a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Well, you're correct in saying Taramina is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is not, and neither is 
Sally Noon Day. So those of you who were answering that question, you are correct. Okay, so Sally Noon Day and Taramina are not UNESCO World Heritage Sites, but you did really well. You guys knew. You, you didn't fall for the trick. Taramina makes you want to think that it is because it's so beautiful and everyone talks about it, but it is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So here we go. Let's continue. So when you start planning a trip to Sicily or to anywhere, really, you have to consider what excites you. And that's something that I talk to my clients about. What do they, what are they passionate about? What their hobbies are? When I, when I work with someone, I want to know what excites you. So why don't you just give me an idea by writing in the chat, I'm looking at the chat here. Um, what excites you? What are your what kind of things are you interested in? Like when you travel, what is it that you like to do? Why don't you tell me that in the chat? Food and drink. Yes. Yes, food and drink. So we say that the uh, Germans come to swim, the French come to walk. And the Americans come to eat. <laughs> so it's silly. All right, we got history and scenery, culture and traditions. Uh, Recogliere le vive. I like that, John. In Italian, that's wonderful. Hiking, outdoors, music, antiquity, Olympia, that's excellent. Penele and Bastenza. All right, you know what you're talking about, MJ. Uh, and architecture walks, very good, excellent. Mix with locals, without a doubt, Nancy. That is a, such a pleasure and very memorable. Visiting historical sites, experiencing different foods and culture, the stories behind the stories, all of it, exactly. The stories are what, you know, we love stories, right? Would love to find a local procession, procession events, Good Friday in Palermo. Yes, yes. And I'll talk a little bit about that coming up, Linda. And then we have the food, wine, people, the sea, the countryside. Yes, there's all of these things. All of these things make a trip really stunning, all right, so we are looking at Monreal Cathedral, by the way, in the background. This is the Christ Pantocrator in the background, the, the Christ that's inviting you in to his light, right? So that is the, the whole point of the architectural design of this cathedral. This cathedral, by the way, is 30 minutes south of Palermo. It's a big part of the Arab Norman uh, itinerary, if you will, of Palermo and, and the UNESCO site of, of that um, Arab Norman patrimony. This has 63,000 square feet of mosaic tiles. 63,000 square feet. This is all mosaic tiles. All these images you're seeing are made with little tiles that are, you know, that has precious stones or um, or gold leaf on uh, with a with a glass over them. So it's pretty pretty awesome to see in person. All right, let's keep going because I'm I know I'm talking a lot. So here with Palermo. Uh, there's so much to see and do in this cultural capital, um, and just the architectural mix is so fascinating there. Uh, Chefalu is this is a, a very typical scene of Chefalu with the um, the medieval town and the La Rocca in the background, um, and then you know we have Scala de Turki. Again, I'm showing you some of the some of the highlights. This is Scala de Turki, which is a a marlstone cliff. So, you know, you have the White Cliffs of Dover. Well, we have the same kind of phenomena here in Sicily as well. So this gives me an opportunity to ask when you plan to travel to Sicily. So I'm going to launch another poll. I really want to know what your thoughts are. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. When do you plan to travel to Sicily? So you have a number of, again, there's a lot of uh, answers here. And I only give you one choice because I really want to see what's the winner here. But I'm about to plan my 2024 uh, tours. And I'm very curious to see people's plans for that year, of course. But of course, this year, too, because now is we call it wave season in, in tourism. When you're talking about the tourism profession, wave season is really for the cruise ship people, because that's the wave of all of the sales coming in. But yes, I'm feeling wave season myself right now. And so we're planning for 2023. So let's one more, uh, a couple of seconds more to participate in when to travel to Sicily, or when do you plan to travel to Sicily? If you can hear something above my head, there is an infant <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have some help upstairs keeping me awake at night. Um, 
All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, I have a couple comments. So yes, Olympia and John are going in March, 2023. And Kenny's saying, I chose May, 2023 because that's trip one, but I expect to be back next year. Huh? Kenny, you're all like, what do you think? Um, and Linda is planning for April, 2023. It's not on the list, right? Because because we're so close at this point, but yes, that's good to hear because I know Olympia and, and Linda, you are planning on spring 2023 and Nancy as well. Nancy's going to be there for three weeks. So exciting. All right, I'm going to end the poll and let's see what your results are. Okay, so lots of you want to go in May and that is really the my favorite time to go. I will say in May is my favorite time to go. September is a very close second, of course, and October as well. Those are really the peak times. Um, a Easter is also for me, um, depending on, you know, when it is, of course, it's always changing, but next year, this year, it's in April, it's the first part of April. And in 2024, it's going to be like the last week in, uh, March is Easter. I think Easter Sunday is actually like the 31st of March was, I just got my 2024 calendar in the mail yesterday, so I can plan. So yeah. So in terms of when is the best time to travel, and this is always a big question I receive, my favorite time is the spring um, and, and, and early, like, so late spring. So really late spring is like May in, into June. Um, but I also love February, March, and April. I know these are not popular times for people to think about traveling to Sicily, but they're, the weather is fantastic and it's wonderful to be there. September and October are also lovely. Uh, I always have been saying to people with climate change, it's very hard for me to tell you what the weather's going to be like. We had an amazing September and October this past year, um, 2022. September, once we hit the 10th of September, it cooled down and it was absolutely beautiful until, well, I left on October 27th, 26th, 27th, and we had just gorgeous, gorgeous days. Whether or not that's going to be the case this year, it's hard to say, but it is absolutely stunning. So Kenny's saying late April, early May trip includes two national holidays in Italy, which I'm hoping is not too much of try. No, in fact, these are fantastic because, for example, April 25th, okay, this is um, what we call Liberation Day. It's uh, recognizing when Italy was liberated from the Nazis. Um that is a fantastic day. They do a lot of festivals, like the Artichoke Festival. It's on April 25th in Cerda outside of Palermo. So that's a fantastic time to be there. Um, and I think actually, Marianne, you and I are going to be at the Artichoke Festival this year, which is really cool. Um, and then you have May Day, May 1st. And that also, it's it's really a day for families and picnics and people are out and all this stuff is open for people to enjoy. So people don't have to work, but there's a uh, there are things going on. So um Yes, and then there's the Ricotta Festival in Vicini. Very good, very true. I know, because I spend time in uh, in the next town over in July in Liquidia Eube, and Vicini has this big art Ricotta Festival, which is a reason, because there's a lot of great-looking sheep. <laughs> so, all right, so that gives you an idea of when to travel. Um, and John's saying, I heard it was very dry and windy, not good for olives. In fact, that's not true. Um, it really depends on what part of the island. It is dry in the summer, without a doubt. And windy depends on uh, the Scirocco from Africa. There's a lot of factors going on when you're talking about um, that, the, the dry and windy, but definitely dry and hot in the summer, no questions. Summer's going to be very hot, but that's the only time we can go. Yes, and, and that's that's true. And I will tell you, Anne, that, or uh, Anna, um, I host... The Secret Sicily, Life in a Remote Sicilian Town Tour in July, and it's in a remote town that's on top of a mountain, um, Liquidia Eube, as I was mentioning, and we have wonderful, wonderful time there because the weather there at night, especially, it's absolutely beautiful because we're away from the, the heat because you're on top of this mountain. So some of it really depends on where you are on the island. The island has many microclimates and that's part of what the agricultural makeup of the island is so interesting, excuse me, because of all these microclimates. All right, so let's keep talking. That's again, Scala de Turki. Um, okay, hold on. I just wanna make sure I can see here what I'm doing. Um, so when to visit, we talked about that. Navigating Sicily, I talked about it a little bit. So there's a couple different ways to get around the island. 
Um, my favorite way is to rent a car and go on your own this way. And I'll talk a little bit about driving in a second. You can have uh, also hire private drivers, which is something we do. We have like our, our people all over the island to drive you depending on where you are. Um, and, uh, you know, different zones have different drivers. This is Castellamada del Golfo, by the way, if you're curious where this is. Um, and, you know, people, of course, think of Italy and they often will take trains to get to most places. Well, northern Italy is true and that's it's very convenient to take the train and it's very easy. Uh, Sicily is not so easy. Between Messina and Palermo, the train is very reliable. Between Messina and Siracusa, it's reliable, not very reliable, but reliable. Anywhere else on the island, unless you have a lot of time, <laughs> I don't suggest taking the train. That's my my feedback there. Sicilians will opt to take the buses more than they will opt to take the train if they're going anywhere else outside of that Messina to Palermo corridor or Messina to Siracusa corridor. So keep that in mind. So really, buses are an option for those of you who want to do public transportation, um, but I, I do highly recommend driving or hiring drivers. Hiring drivers is, of course, luxurious. Not everyone can afford that, but it really is quite an awesome way. Well, you just come on a tour with me, right? And and then Massimo and I take care of all the navigation or whichever driver I'm working with. Um, and so that 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 is part of the the joy of the small group tour is that you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Um, but if you are um, independently traveling and uh, you're you're a little bit more budget conscious than having private drivers, uh, no, John, there is not Uber, and we are fighting Uber from coming actually. So there's no Uber. But the private drivers that are around, they're very accessible, and it's a huge profession for Sicilians, and that's part of why there is no Uber. It's a big piece of the tourism business is the transportation around the island, and lots of English-speaking drivers, and they speak enough English, and you can use Google Translate and stuff, and the prices are pretty reasonable for the service you're getting. So regarding driving yourself, again, I rely on Google Maps. Primarily, I do not use Waze. I do not use Apple Maps because they're just not as reliable. Google really is very reliable in Sicily. Yes, once in a while, it'll send me down some crazy street that is like impossible for a car to go and it ends up being a staircase that has happened to me. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to be confident and get in reverse and go back and have the ladies in the alleyway help you get out because that's what spins. So they're like, I'm talking about it. they come out and they're like, oh, it's some American with this car. <laughs> that happened to me and it's actually makes for a great story. <laughs> That's been happening. Um, so yes, it can be harrowing. I recommend staying in our city centers when you have a car. I also uh, encourage you to get the smallest car possible, which often means manual transmission. Uh, I really recommend manual transmission if you if you can drive manual, absolutely it saves you a lot of money. And then also you can or you can rent a small car like a Fiat 500 or similar. Um, larger cars, which tend to the automatics tend to be larger, are um, absolutely possible. There are many of them. It it it, uh, it just is a matter of I would say out of city centers if you have an automatic transmission larger car because you you will have problems you will uh, I have had clients rip tires on corners of sidewalks because they're marble and get you know get stuck I mean the, the, I don't recommend bringing an automatic transmission larger car into a city center however. You can drive very easily. Once you're not in these city centers, it's very comfortable driving. Um, once you understand that people are just not, they're they're tapping you on the shoulder. Does that make sense? Um, when they're coming back on on your on your bumper, they're they're actually saying, you know, can I get by? Can I get by? Can you can you just push, you know, step aside so I can get by? That's really the attitude, and you just. It, you have to be very active driving, right? That's the other thing. You have to be looking forwards. You have to look back all the time. You're looking forwards, not just where in your lane, but you're looking at your lane to see if there's someone in your lane coming at you because of the of the uh, oncoming traffic making those 
those uh, passing, okay? Because there's a lot of passing because there's not multi-lane roads in Sicily. Most of them are two-lane roads going in, you know, opposite directions. Um, I see some questions. Okay, so is parking a problem? Sure, Anna, it is. It can be in some places. Um, not everywhere, but it, it's possible that um, you can have trouble parking, of course, just like you would anywhere in the United States in a, in a city center. Uh, Autostrada is very scenic. Yes, the Autostrada is very scenic. And one of the things I always make sure that I do, especially that Autostrada, which is the A19 between Catania and Palermo and vice versa, is I always make sure before I get on that road that I have a full tank of gas because that is not a place where you want to um, be driving without a full tank of gas. There is a very long distance between gas stations on that highway. It's almost like in Florida, I guess there's the Florida has that Gator Gat Alley or whatever they call it. And it's similar to that in terms of like, you are on these, um, once you're in the center of Sicily, you're on these like skyways almost because you're, you're, you're on elevated highways that have uh, fences. There's no getting off of them. And so, you know, this is, this is the kind of stuff that you have to just be very, very careful um, and aware. And so when I work with you, I prep you a lot for this kind of stuff. Mid-size vans that seat 12 or 13 available with drivers or smaller vans better. Okay. So I would never recommend a, a human from America <laughs> to drive a 12 or 13 van, seat van yourself. You ha And in fact, you can't, you can get a nine seat or a seven seat van. And I have driven a nine seat manual transmission, by the way, all of those are manual transmission, nine or seven seat. Um, you can rent those and drive them. Uh, and I've done it so it can be done. Um, Mid-sized vans that see 12 or 13 available. Okay. So yes and no, I know one company who has a 13 seat van that comes with a driver, you know, it's a small coach. Then some of them come in 16 seat and some of them come in 20 seat. I tend to work with 20 seat vans with driver because that's where my sweet spot is for my groups of 12 people or so. Okay. So that, if that answers your question, um, I hope so. This is a very complex, so, so transportation is a big part of tourism, I have to admit. And it's a big part of the logistics that we are planning all the time for our small group tours and for you. Okay, so what was that question here? Oh, ideal itinerary length. Yes, so how long should you spend in Sicily? How long should you plan? Ideal for me is 13, 14, 15 days in there, depending on who you're traveling with. And, you know, so um, because you can really see all of the sites that we've been talking about, not all of them, but most of those sites we spoke about in a very comfortable manner without really, with enjoying it in a slower pace. 10 days for people who are work and don't have a lot of vacation time can work. And you can see both sides of the island in 10 days if you're younger and you're you're happy to move at a faster pace. Less than 10 days, we're talking about a week, eight, seven, eight days, pick a side of the island and stay on that side of the island. And maybe you can get Agrigento in there for an overnight. Uh, you can do that. But like I said, pick a side. Don't try and do all of Sicily in seven, eight days. You will go You'll just run yourself ragged. It's not worth it. You won't remember anything. It's not It's not worth doing that. So just enjoy, because part of the joy of Sicily, and I'm going to get into that next, is, um, you know, the people and spending time. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So what kind of uh, accommodations exist? Okay, well, I really recommend characteristic accommodations. And that means things that are really have a Sicilian sort of style to them. There are really no big chain hotels in Sicily, okay? There is a Sheridan, all right? There's one Sheridan near Catania. So if you have points and you want to use them, that's probably the one place you can use them is the Catania Sheridan, which actually is not in Catania at all. It's in Achi um, Castello. It's a decent hotel, nothing special. My friends actually, who I helped you know, I consult them recently, they stay there because they have points. And they said, it was a nice hotel. Do, you know, they don't have nothing memorable, let's say. So meanwhile, you can stay at a vineyard. You can stay at an olive farm. You can stay, these are called agriturismo or farm stays. Um, you can stay in, a, you know, a boutique hotel that's like, you know, very modern and in, in newly built. Newly built um, 
You can stay in villas. There are beautiful villas. If you wanted to rent a villa for a week uh, with a bunch of people, you can do that. But know that those rentals are from Saturday to Saturday. They, they're not straying from that so much. They were going to, and after COVID, they're not. Because owners don't want to have, owners of these luxury villas don't want to have multiple people coming through for three nights, five nights, et cetera. It's, it's bad for the villa. It's their it's their vacation villa, right? So they they it is a, an investment property, and they they want really Saturday to Saturday. And so what that means is then you're constricted to that area where that villa is. And you can probably you know if you pick a villa that has a good uh, position, you can get to places within two hours a lot from one of these villas. Let's say. Um, so it's pros and it's cons, right? There are definitely pros and cons to that, depending on the kind of vacation you want to do. So. Uh, you know, the, the luxury um, hotels like the the White Lotus, which is the San Domenico Palace, it's a Four Seasons. Okay, that's in Taramina. Taramina is going to have those kind of luxury, old, uh, you know, classic European kind of things. There's a few modern ones there. Uh, because it's just, it's been in the tourism uh, industry there has existed for centuries. Outside of Taramina, you have a more modern uh, style or you have more farmhouse Agri Turismo style. Then there's Rocco Forte with Villa Egea. That's the five star uh, estate that was the Florio estate that is now, he renovated it in the last three years. It's an stunning property. But again, it's a five star hotel. You're going to pay $1,200, or 1200 euro a night. Um, he also has a resort called Verdura in the South. So there, there's it, the scope is very large, but I, I want to encourage you to consider, you know, one of these places that uh, you're looking at, like on the lower right-hand corner, this is Borgano Chiara, where I bring some of my groups. This is a beautiful family-run olive farm with a fantastic restaurant. It does not cost more than 120 euro a night. 100 euro a night depending on the season right so so th this is the kind of thing when when if you open your heart and you have someone who has you like me we can put you in some interesting places that won't break the bank and that you'll still feel like wow this was an amazing place to stay um i mentioned research in in heritage experiences this is something we can help you with this is tom i uh helped him find a distant cousin um in sambuca di sicilia Okay, so th this can be done. I recommend starting your own uh, research first with Ancestry, with ellisisland.org, with familysearch.org. Um, and then there's also an Italian site, the Antonati, I think it's called. It's an uh, Italian heritage. Um, it's, there's an English uh, set, you know, aspect to that site. You can read the English version. That's a very, very good site for Italian research. There's a lot out there. It's a whole field. Um, I work with a di couple different people I recommend uh, to help you with this, this kind of service. And we, we do all of the, the, um, the, the experiences at the towns because I know Sicily probably better than most of the people that are doing their research for you. But the research can be done uh, by you, by uh, our local insiders can help once you've done a certain amount or you, know, you hire a professional to help you. So let's making your trip remarkable. What makes these trips remarkable other than all these cool sites, right? You want to feel something when you're in Sicily. You want to feel something when you travel. Um, and so my favorite thing is to get surrounded by sheep. <laughs> That's another thing I love. Uh, so here's a shot of that. But, you know, like I said, interaction with locals. Well, sheep are locals, right? Sheep and goats are locals. So one of the, the things I love to do in Secret Sicily, my July tour, is a lot about this because we are, like, in, embedded in the village of Lico di Eubea for 10 days while we are in Sicily we use it as a base. And it is a fantastic way to um, to practice your Italian, to meet uh, meet Sicilians, um, we do it's during the feast of their patron saint Santa Margherita. So um, we have a fantastic week there. I can't express enough for someone who really wants to feel embedded in Sicily and really get to know the locals. It's a fantastic way to to tour Sicily with me and enjoy it. So you know you want to do village experiences basically, and that's um that's really where you're gonna interact with the locals and have a really um, memorable heartwarming experience. Markets, there's lots of markets, Palermo, Catania. This one is in, in, in Ortigia in Siracusa. So there's lots of markets. That's my friend Claudio who makes baskets and Rosella, his, his wife. Um, 
We have, uh, of course, all the amazing vegetables and, uh, you know, the fishmongers. Here's Angela <laughs> and the cheesemakers. And then there's all this amazing street food. So market tours are fantastic. And I, I love uh, the market tours and the street food tours. They're a lot of fun and you know, trying different things that you never tried. We talked a little bit about um, arancine, et cetera, a little bit earlier. And then uh, we'll talk about that's part of it too. Uh, John, no, I don't help you gain Italian citizenship. I actually do have my Italian citizenship. I'm very fortunate. I can point you in the right direction, but you want to work with somebody like uh, my Italian family, with uh, somebody like Lo Schiavo Genealogica, um, which is this, uh, I just was interviewed by them. And you can visit my homepage on experiencesystem.com and watch that interview um, link is there. So yeah, Italian citizenship is a whole other <laughs> Well, um, but yeah, food tours, walking tours, cooking experiences. You go to the market and you buy stuff, and and with a local lady, you'll cook. Um, this is sardines we're making. Wine experiences. Sicily is a major, major wine region. It's the like, wines are amazing. You will have great varietal of wines that you've never heard of. Um, so Nero d'Avola is a big one that's getting, uh, having a moment. Of course, we have Pericone and Catarato, Insolia, uh, Frappato, uh, there's all the Nero Mascalese, Nero Capuccio. There's so many different grapes that you're not familiar with. When you come to Sicily, I do not want to hear you say anything about Pinot anything. Please do not pino anything when you're in Sicily. There are 15 other grape varietals, different kinds of wines, and you should taste them when you're there because it's it'll open up a whole other palette for you. Kenny's asking, any local food bloggers, food journals, or social media accounts you recommend following? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, just do, uh, certainly I will blog about food a little bit, but... Um, if you do a hashtag Sicily or Sicilia um, on Instagram, for example, you will find a ton of people blogging about food. There's a lot of food bloggers out there focusing just on Sicily. What cities do you recommend skipping if you only have 10 days? Okay, we'll get to that question. Uh, olive cultivation, cheese making, live theater in Syracuse in the summer. They do ancient Greek theater in the ancient Greek theater in Syracuse. So this is something spectacular in May and June to experience. Um, of course, boat excursions are amazing and fantastic. This is Castellamare del Golfo, my favorite place to do a boat excursion from. Volcano experience with Mount Etna. I'm telling you guys, it's pretty cool um, to be on an active volcano, the most active European volcano, in fact. And of course, hiking is amazing in Sicily. I just did a couple amazing hikes there myself. I love hiking in Sicily. And like here is a, this is Cava Grande, which is sort of part of that whole Pantelica. I was talking about Pantelica and the gorges, um, the canyons that exist. This is a canyon. You're in the middle of a limestone canyon. This is a natural spring fed pool to swim in in the summer. I took this picture in July, 2019. Um, this is, and then you have off the beaten path villages. Sant'Angelo Musato is here on the top of that, that mound there. And if you look carefully, you can see all in here, there are tombs all through the side of this mountainside has tombs in them. Pretty neat. Um, then we have the amazing hidden corners. This is actually an, a, a contemporary art farm. Uh, this is a theater. They actually do do performances here, but this is, it looks like ancient theater, but it's actually a modern theater built by a living sculptor, uh, Lorenzo Reina, and it's called Teatro Andromeda. It's a really cool, famous place in Sicily. Um, and then the views are just amazing, right? If you want to get away from it all, we can also get you to a place that's away from it all. And these and spectacular views. Sicily, this is the inside of Sicily. This is Enna. Look at the mountains and the wheat fields. It's just incredible views and castles everywhere. Castles everywhere. People like oh. And then I mentioned festivals and uh, events. And so all throughout the year, this is something that the pageantry of Easter, St. Agatha, uh, Santa Rosalia in July, we do the prelude for Sacred Sicily. It's Santa Rosalia for four days, we do uh, Palermo. Um, and what else? Easter, of course, St. Joseph's Day, which is March 19th. Olympia and John are going to be there for, for St. Joseph's Day this year. So I encourage you to consider 
booking your tour during some of these festivals. St. Agatha is one of the biggest religious festivals. It's three days. It's February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Um, that's in Catania. I've experienced it myself. It's fascinating. And then there's things like little places like the the, the Madonna of the Light in Porticello, for example, which is what this picture is here. Um, that's the town my grandparent, my grandfather came from, fishing village. And so the Madonna del Lume is so important to those fishermen. The veneration is the power of that veneration is amazing to to witness. And of course, Good Friday procession in Enna or in Trapani. There are so many things to see. It's, a, it's an amazing window into the culture when you experience it, those feasts. And of course, we have arts and culture, uh, meaning artisanal stuff like ceramics. This is a Trinacria, which I will tell you about when you're on a tour with me. But this is the three-legged um, symbol of Sicily. Ceramics are uh, throughout the island. We have five ceramic centers in Sicily. The Opera dei Pupi, which is the marionette theater, this is a UNESCO recognized uh, cultural heritage. Um, and then just incredible, incredible ancient art uh, around the island. So the youth of Mozia, we have in uh, Adonie this uh, medallion of, of gold and silver. Um, archaeological finds in Syracuse in the Museo or see the Salinas Archaeological Museum in Palermo. This is the, the portrait of an unknown man. This is in a little tiny, um, this is Antonino Di Messina, this little tiny museum in Cefalu. You can see incredible art. Here's another Di Messina. This is the Madonna, um, uh, uh, the Assumption, uh, the Annunciata, I'm sorry, the Annunciata, and she's in Palermo in the Galleria uh, Regionale, which is the Palazzo Abatellis. Um, so many amazing, the bronzes and the, the friezes and the Venus here is in Ortigia, sorry, in Siracusa. So, so much to see. A lot of music. Sicily has a very, very rich folk music culture. So there's a whole... Uh, repertoire of Sicilian folk music that you can experience and certainly I play a lot of it if you're coming to the travel show in a couple next weekend you'll hear some Sicilian folk music that I will perform um and then of course Teatro Massimo in in Palermo and Teatro Bellini in Catania there's opera there's music and cultural events all throughout the year um Festival of Avancino is another one. Yes, that is for Santa Lucia, which is December 13th. They have the, the Arancini Festi Festival in Palermo. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned the Artichoke Festival. There's all sorts of the Ricotta Festival. There's all kinds of these sagras and um, religious festivals. Shopping, of course. There's lots of shopping, lots of ceramics, jewelry, tatting jewelry here, uh, the you know souvenirs. And then, of course, we have cannoli right so did you know cannoli are not italian cannoli are sicilian did you know that well i'm telling you now and you can come on the cannoli crawl with me and learn a lot more about cannoli so just know here we are we're entering the food part of our our excursion tonight so we have um amazing uh you know you're in the middle of wheat fields so obviously if you're really uh lucky you eat Wheat uh, flour in the pasta and the bread and the pizza that you're eating came from the field that you're looking at. And I have done that. <laughs> it's an amazing job. It's just even 10 days ago when I was in Caltini uh, Setta, um, I had, yes, this is Bucatini uh, macaroni. It's fresh macaroni from Piazza Marina, actually. And this is, uh, this is the pasta alla norma, uh, which is the, you know, a little sauteed eggplant with uh, some tomato, light tomato sauce and basil, and then shaved ricotta salata on top. That is your typical uh, Eastern Sicilian pasta dish. Um, so yeah, I was in Catanisetta and we were at a, a flour mill the other day and uh, I was learning all about milling wheat and milling flour and how flours are blended. And then I went to the restaurant owned by the mill and I had the most amazing pizza. <laughs> so then, which is near the fields that I just was driving through. So it's pretty amazing. Yes, Paninero from Castel Beltrano um, with the Tumania. Uh, ancient grain, it's, that's incredible um, to eat. And the cheeses, I can't talk enough about the cheeses, all the fresh cheeses. You saw the sheep, right? So there you go. You have lots of sheep's milk cheeses. We have couscous in Sicily. Of course, St. Joseph's Day is March 19th. So you've got the Spincione, the San Giuseppe. 
Arancine, Arancini, depending on who you talk to, Eastern or Western Sicily. Uh, Portini mushrooms in October grow on Mount Etna. Gelato in a brioche, that's what this is over here on the right. That's an amazing thing uh, to, uh, to, to eat. Sandwich, it's a nice fruit sandwich, basically. This is what they have for breakfast in the summer in Sicily. Right, I was mentioning in the caponata, right? Caponata is like a, a consummate a Sicilian dish of sweet and sour. Uh, usually the base is uh, eggplant, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, originally it was the capone fish. That's where the caponata comes from, the capone fish, which is mahi-mahi actually, um, was the base of this dish. So there's a lot of things to learn about cuisine and Sicilian cuisine. That's why taking a cooking excursion or a, a class or even just doing a some kind of food experience is, is helpful to learn about all the stuff you'll be eating. Um, pasta con sarde, in, uh, swordfish in voltini, amazing. This is raw shrimp. It's amazing. You can eat that and it's like butter on your tongue. Uh, most amazing tuna you feel ever eat because you're looking at the sea from where it came. And then, of course, marzipan, which is we have lots of almonds in Sicily through the southeastern Sicily and Agrigento province. So many almonds are cultivated. And then we make incredible uh, marzipan. These are lambs for Easter with that stuff. Oops. OK, sorry. Hold on. Uh, OK, so now small group. Tour, I'm going to talk about the small group tours. What time is it? Oh, I'm like at my end here, but I'm going to keep going. Stay with me. Stay with me, folks. <laughs> keep going. Um, Thank you, Kenny. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. And um, like I said, I'm going to post the the uh, recording of this on uh, YouTube so you can go and watch the final minutes if you have to leave now. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. OK, so small group tours. I do small group tours. I'm your tour leader. And that's uh, at the moment. Most of my tours, I do about five, six tours a year. I also will lead some private tours. And I also have some colleagues that leave private tours for you. I really like small groups. I tend to do 12 people or sometimes 13. I've been known to go up to 14, but that's really my limit because I really like being in, in smaller characteristic inns, eating in family run trattorias, really being able to take the small vehicles. We go off the beaten path. We can be in villages. So I don't like to do um, groups that are bigger than that. And so then it re really have the opportunity to, to interact with local people and, uh, and that's part of the big joy of these trips. And so I was mentioning, I'm not doing Easter this year, but in 2024, I do hope to do an Easter trip. And Easter is a magnificent time to visit this island. And you don't have to be religious to do this. This is not about uh, Christianity necessarily. It's about the pageantry of 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 what happens between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. To, to witness that is so amazing all these different events throughout that Holy Week. Plus we do a lot of other things. We're seeing all the principal sites as well, by, but also witnessing the like these rituals that the local people do, which are really fascinating to experience. Um, uh, May, I do a photography in Sicily tour with Don Tuthiger with Hunt's photo of Boston. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity to photograph in Sicily and travel through the lens, I like to say. And it is really a hands-on, intense photography workshop. I highly recommend it. Um, Don is a fantastic teacher, and it's really a workshop, as we like to call it. Um, then I do May, June, Enchanting Sicily. This year's Enchanting Sicily is sold out. I have a wait list, but it is sold out. And it is my favorite uh, time to travel, like I was mentioning, the late May, early June time of the year. Um, and we, I'm going to be doing two of these in 2024 because this tour is so popular. I decided for 2024, I'm going to be doing two Enchanting Sicilies in May, early June. I have to get the dates together, but that will happen. Yeah. Um, and then Yoga in Sicily. So 2023, we have Yoga in Sicily, June 7th to June 17th. It's 10 days. It is an amazing trip because in 10 days, we see pretty much what you see like in Enchanting Sicily in two weeks, we do in 10 days because, you know, yoga people, we're a little bit more, you know, we're active uh, doing it. So we, we practice yoga along the way. We do yoga type of uh, activities, um, but it's very, uh, Cleo Mallon is the co-host of this and she's an outstanding teacher. And so it, the two of us do an awesome uh trip an itinerary and it's with this theme of yoga so if you have interest in that or know people of interest of it let them know because it's a fantastic way to travel Sicily and this trip is um a really affordable trip to do it 
If you want to make your way around the island, does it take make sense to fly out of Catania now? Yes, you want to do that exactly. Um, this is what I tell all my clients. I say, please wait to make your reservations for your flights until we figure out your route, because I like to see what's going on festival wise. Definitely plan <laughs> unless you're doing a seven to eight day trip, like I was mentioning. Definitely plan fly into one airport and out of the other. Do whatever you can not to have to backtrack because it's three hours between the airports and you do not want to, you're in Catania, you have to be in Palermo the next day. You lose like a whole day just traveling back to Palermo and it, or vice versa. So so definitely, um, Patricia, this is a great question and thank you for mentioning that. I, I should have mentioned that and that is a huge thing. Fly into one airport, out of the other. Catania, Palermo, they're both about the same size. Catania might be a little bit bigger than Palermo, actually, but Palermo might have more flights from the U.S. Uh, not even, because there's no direct flights. Okay, I want to make, make that very clear. There's no direct flights. You're always going to fly through someplace in Europe to get to, Pilot, to Sicily, whether it's Rome or whether it's in Munich or Frankfurt or Zurich. Uh, depending on, again, what airline you're flying, that will determine where you fly through. So then I have Secret Sicily. I've been mentioning that. That's life in a remote Sicilian town. Uh, we In September, I do Story Sicily, which is our cooking and wine. It's eight days. We stay in the same agriturismo and olive farm outside of Palermo. And it's, you know, we get to see, we see Valley of the Temples. We see Trapani. We get around, but we're also doing it through the food and wine uh, lens in terms of this. Three hands-on cooking classes. It's not all cooking all the time, which is very different from a lot of uh, cooking experiences. It's a really nice balance between seeing Sicily, experiencing local people, and also doing food-related activities. And then, of course, October stunning Sicily trip, which is, again, similar to Enchanted Sicily. It's a two-week trip, uh, full scope of the island, uh, at a really, really nice pace. And I will be doing two of these also in 2024 because it's so popular, this trip. So I will be announcing those dates soon because I'm going to be doing the travel show next weekend and I want to have the dates ready to go. So stand by for the 2024 dates if you want to do that. So if you want to start these tours, go to this experiencesly.com website. You can click on Tours of Sicily and you'll get a pull down menu and then you can click on the tour that you are curious to see more about. That is where all of the day-to-day uh itineraries are listed okay so now i'll note that i do host some stateside events so you can come meet me in person i don't usually talk as much as i am right now because uh you know i'm trying to get as much in as possible i like to ask you a lot of questions here what you say i'm gonna get to that in a second which place is better for a couple of nights to stay trapani or eriche um linda i would not stay in eriche uh it is beautiful if you want to relax and have like, you know, be on the top of a mountain, Eriche is great, especially because that's where the Temple of Venus was. So it's a very romantic place. However, to use it as a base to discover other parts of Trapani province is a little bit difficult because you have to go to the mountain every time you want to go or back up the mountain so in terms of commuting it's not a fantastic um option this was really fun you're welcome patricia okay so this has been wonderful how to we have to run okay wait there was a question do you want to make your way around the island does it take da, 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 da. where's the other question there was another question here that i skipped over what cities do you recommend skipping if you only have 10 days um <laughs> that's really up to you i would i mean i always Catania is always on the back burner for me, unless someone's really interested in World War II. Uh, and then, um, you know, Trapani, uh, not Trapani, well, Trapani itself, not so much necessarily, but Trapani Province is pretty awesome. I would not miss Trapani Province if you can't, um, if you have to, you know, if that's a choice. Well, actually, Taramina is not one of my favorite places because it's so touristy. <laughs> so, so if you just me, let's skip Taramina, but that's just me. Most people want to go there, so I don't want to influence, you know, that. So, um, but Siracusa for me is a must. Agrigento, seeing Valley of the Temple is a, is a must. Palermo is a must. Chifalu, not as much as necessary if you're seeing uh, Palermo. And I absolutely love... Um, 
Trapani Province and Aniche and Castelmar del Golfo, I think those are special places. So, and uh, you can skip also, um, but definitely if you get, get Piazza della Marina in there, I would absolutely say the Roman Villa is it worth, you know, passing through if you're going between Siracusa and Agrigento without a doubt. Messina, don't even, you know, it's okay. Messina's okay. It's a special if you have roots from there, but there's not, it, it's a, um, in terms of a city, it's modern because of the 1908 earthquake. There's not a lot there. Okay, so, so anyway, coming up, Proud at the Javits Center in New York City next weekend. Join me and my team. We're going to be there all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You can get tickets um, uh, on Eventbrite. Um, and if you're on my mailing list, you got the special code. If you want to email me and say, yeah, you attended tonight, I will email you the special code to get complimentary tickets to next week's travel show. I'm going to be doing an Italy's Chocolate at the Westchester Italian Cultural Center in Tuckahoe on February 10th with my colleague, uh, Carla Gambesha, who wrote... Uh, the dictionary of crazy stuff from Italy. Um, her, this, this is escaping me the title of the book, but she wrote an amazing book about Italy and we were gonna be talking about chocolate. Me specifically, I will be talking about Modican chocolate because that's a very special thing. So if you don't want to leave a cool city out, don't leave out Modica. If you love chocolate, you should go there. Um, then I do a cannoli crawl. So this is my walking food tour I mentioned. We taste lots of cannoli. You become a cannoli connoisseur at the end of the day, March 4th, April 8th, Saturdays, and then March 15th is a Wednesday. I will also have more announced in August. Okay, so there's some of those coming up. And then I will be hosting my St. Joseph's Day. I usually do an annual St. Joseph's Day luncheon, March 19th in New York City, the place to be announced. Um, I'm still working on that, those details. And then of course, I have a podcast. I have a few episodes. I'd like to do more of that so soon, but you can visit my, you can find my podcast on Sicily at most places where podcasts are available. So look for On Sicily with Allison Scola from Experience Sicily. You can listen to a couple episodes. Um, okay, so Amuni, guys, let's go. Let's go. Sicily is waiting for you and they want you and they're very excited to see you in Sicily. So, um, thank you so much for listening. I'm not done. I'm going to take questions. Okay. So I just want to, there's my contact information. And again, here's our beautiful Island with all of the fascinating things we spoke about tonight. Here is the, the highlights, right? And so once again, um, you can contact me, um, find me at experiencesicily.com, of course, and on Instagram at, at experiencesicily. Um, you can find my page on Facebook, Experience Sicily. So, um, and then me or my team will get in touch with you and we can certainly uh, set up a time to talk more individually if you want. But let, let's get to questions. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen um, so we can all see each other and you can turn off your mic if you want and or right in the chat and um let me pull that chat up again i lost my chat um so i want to i want to make sure that i get to your questions because i know many of you have a lot of questions so just where did it go though i lost the chat where'd it go <sighs> hold on sorry um you're welcome mj you're welcome show chat previews okay but where's my chat box here it is okay i see it now all right so thank you it's excellent see you in october yes J tom oh yes you're coming in october i'm saying <laughs> tom you're coming in october not may are you doing any travel shows in dc no i am not i'm not this year it may be in the future, but not this year. Travel shows are wonderful and fantastic way to meet people. They're very expensive. So, so I will not be in D.C. this year. Um, but certainly we can schedule a time to talk on the phone if we want to talk more. Which place is better? Okay, that was really fun. Okay, so um, who wants to ask a question on screen or, or with your mute button off? Anyone? Come on. Did I talk so much I answered all your questions? You have no questions for me. <laughs> so I know, Nancy, if you're still here in Olympia, you guys have been planning, right? And Marianne, we're, we're, uh, we're, we've planned. I have to get you your, your cost, of course. That's part of what I'm working on right now. I have a whole list of things to do. You're, you're on my list over here on my desk. Um, so, Allison? Yes, John, ask your question. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, awesome, awesome uh, program tonight. Um, for those that um, 
you know, worried about health concerns, anything you can remark about, um, you know, the, uh, the ongoing pandemic or COVID um, um, experience yes. there. Question. Thank you for asking this question. So um, to know, you know, there's no travel restrictions in Italy any longer. There hasn't been since, um, I don't remember, June 1st, 2021, maybe. Um, so uh, know that you can go as you normally would have. It helps to be vaccinated. You don't have to show any proof of vaccination. Uh, but I highly recommend traveling vaccinated from COVID because it is still out there, as we know. Um, and personally, I just came back because I was there for 10 days over the holidays. And and I um, I still, and I've been emphatic with most of my clients, especially my tours, that you should travel wearing a KN95 or N95 mask. The minute you step into the airport to the minute you leave the airport, I highly recommend. Now, you'll see people on the flights and people in the airports. And just like in the States, they're not, no one's wearing masks. Like, there's few of us wearing masks. I know from my experience that that is people's travel, even if they're sick. Even if they're supposed to be home in bed or staying away from people, they don't want to spend the money in the hotel room or whatever. They are traveling. If they have plans to travel and they spent money on a flight, they're still going and they're getting on that flight. And I just, to protect myself and protect your loved ones, I highly recommend traveling safely and wearing a KN95. I wouldn't wear a surgical mask. That's not going to do anything against some of these variants. So, and this is just me because I'm, I, you know, I worked at Columbia University. My, one of my deans was in the public health school. So I kind of follow like what Columbia University recommends. And so that's one of the things is the, the KN95 mask. Um, yeah, I take it off to eat, you know, five minutes here and then I put it back on. Um, so I highly recommend that. In terms of what you're going to experience in Sicily, um, it's similar to here uh, that, uh, well, even not so much because most people there are vaccinated. 90% of Italians are vaccinated. They are on, they're on the program. Um, so what you'll find is that to them, it's over. There's no nothing to worry about. They, you know, COVID's around, but in to Italians, it's it's not an issue. It's not a big deal. Um, so you can feel pretty safe traveling there. Uh, once you get through the act of traveling itself, meaning on the flights and in the airports, it's very safe to travel there. Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I always recommend travel insurance because, uh, you know, if you get sick and you need to be in a hospital or you want to be transported out of Sicily, medically transported, these are, this is why you have travel insurance, um, for, for sure. It's, it's the medical coverage that you might need. I have been very fortunate knock on wood. Um, I've had people with me for eight years now and, I've had uh, really no problems. Um, and so uh, prudent, just be prudent, prudent like you would be where you ever you are at home. So I hope that answers your question. Um, can villas include chefs, cooks for some meals? Yes, you can. Most villa companies um, and villas, we will help hire a chef for you or the villa company the owner of the villa often has like chef that that or a couple chefs that they trust to be in their kitchen in their house, um, and so they have a recommendation. So that's very common to have a, a chef come in and prepare breakfast every day or a couple days or and dinner whenever you want. So it's all done in advance. All this stuff's planned in advance. Are you doing uh, are all of the markets in Sicily? Which should we not miss? Hmm. I think myself personally. I, the, the Il Capo in uh, Palermo to me and Ballero in Palermo are really outstanding. Bucheria in Palermo has become more of a night hangout, which is cool. It's very cool. Um, but certainly if you're interested in like the fruits and the vegetables and seeing how this all works, Il Capo and, um, and Ballero in Palermo are fantastic. Catania, if you're really into fish, the, mar the fish market there is really interesting. The Catania market is very interesting. Uh, but if you've been to Palermo, you, you, you don't really need to do Catania as much. The other one that's really sweet and is very small compared to others is the Antico Mercato in um, in Ortigia, in Siracusa. And that's a fun market to eat lunch in because the, the tables in the middle and at Porcio and it's uh, 
Cafe Bordieri. These are great places to have lunch in Siracusa. So there you go. Um, thank you, Nancy. It was nice having you here. Um, okay, what else? The Olympia has a question. Will it be difficult to drive in Palermo without our with our automatic car? Um, not outside of the historic center. The roads are pretty wide. Um, but you need to be careful, and this is something for all of Italy, actually, um, but certainly Sicily, is uh, that what they have what's called the ZTL. ZTL means Zona Traffico Limitato, the zone of limited traffic. <laughs> so these historic centers, and what you'll see is when you approach a historic center, you will see there's a, a sign, it's, it's a digital sign, it'll say ZTL activata or, or, or non activata, activated or not activated. And more often than not, now March, Olympia, when you're traveling, you probably will, mm, it depends on the day and the time of the day, um, you might be okay. But it, when you see that ZTL activated, you do not want to drive into that historic center with your car if you can avoid it. Um, and I don't know, I don't remember where you're staying. Oh, you're staying Casa de Amici, right? Okay, so ask um, ask Santo okay. for help, okay, about that, because I don't remember, he's he is in the historic center somewhat, but he may have some advisement about where you can park. And also he, he might have some advisement like your bags and how to get to him. Um, in Palermo, there, it's pretty, it's actually pretty easy. You get uh, there, you get a um you go to tobacco and you get a, a thing and you scratch off a number and then you go to a website and you enter it in and you enter your car information and you register your car so it's and it's five euro to do that per day something like that but have santo help you it's much better so in, in, in other words for all of you wherever you're going the hotel that you're staying in mm -hmm. tap the reception before you leave you know before you go there like now write to me email and say i am going to have a car What's the parking situation like? Can you tell me about the ZTL and what do I need to do to avoid having problems with the Z ZTL? Because okay. there are cameras everywhere, just like in New York City, we have cameras everywhere. I just paid attention to myself, $50. I was like, I drove on Sunday morning at 7.55 in the morning in a bus lane. How, on a Sunday, it was activated and I got this bill. I was like, are you kidding me, really? Yes, between 6 and 10 a.m. every day of the week. So, and this is how it is, like in, in Italy too, there, there's just cameras everywhere and they'll, and you'll get the bill from your rental car company. So to avoid a problem. Okay, sure. thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on beaches in the summer? Crazy crowded? Uh, are there times of day that are better? Okay, so beaches. This is a great question um, and a great topic. So depending on where you are on the island, some places there are sandy beaches and the South especially, um, that's on the Mediterranean because we have three seas, okay? The Tyrrhenian Sea in the North, the Ionian Sea on the East side, and then the uh, Mediterranean Sea on the South. And so the Mediterranean is where you're gonna find most of your sandy beaches. Um, you're going to see a lot of rocky beaches on the Ionian side because of the volcano, it's just the nature of that. And then on the north coast, it's variable. So you'll have a beautiful sandy beach in Chefalu, and then you'll have rocks like where I swim is, is rocks and rock stacks. Um, Chapani province has a mix of both sandy and rocks. Um, so, uh, and again, is it a nature preserve or is it a Lido? And so that's another thing. Is it Jardini Noxus and Taramina, which is all Lido's, which, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, or is it free beach, which means that you bring your towel and you just set up anywhere you want. So all these beaches or these places where you swim have a different thing going on. So um, a Lido is a place that is like a bar owns the, or they have the access, they have the rights, let's say, to a swath of beach, and they may put a uh, lounge lounge chairs every five feet with umbrellas so you'll have two lounge chairs an umbrella in the middle and you rent that you pay the bar restaurant whatever owns that swath or is responsible for it you pay them for a day and that price could be anywhere between 15 euro a day to 150 euro to 200 euro a day depending on how luxurious that beach club may be but those are called Lido's and they're actually quite nice to have because 
you won't show, you don't have an umbrella to carry with you. You can buy one certainly for five or 10 euro. Um, but it's very nice to have one of those Lido's and it's very comfortable. Um, and what time of the day? Well, I will tell you that lunchtime, everyone goes home and they think Sicilians in general and tourists are different, right? So tourists have their own tourist schedule, but Sicilians are like, what do you mean you're on the beach between one and five? Are you crazy? What? To them, when we think, oh, we should be on the beach because that's the best sun, they're like, that is the hottest part of the day. You should never, you shouldn't have a child with you, certainly, if you're between one and four PM. Definitely not. You know, like that's their they think you're crazy. So, so you know, I I actually love going in the late afternoon myself because it isn't as crowded. Um, mornings tend to be the most crowded. So between nine and one is when it's going to be most crowded. That's generally what I have found. Um, and so that's the idea behind beaches. My favorite beach okay, is in southwestern Agnigento province um, in the town. It, it's Bovo Marina, Bovo Marina. It's an absolutely beautiful. So all along there, okay, between Agnigento and Shaka, between Agnigento and Shaka are, and I like rugged natural beaches, okay? So that's, I will preface that. It is like the Caribbean between that between. So you have Siculana, Siculiana Marina and you have Torre Salsa Reserve and Torre Salsa Reserve leads into the um, the Verdura, the Beliche Valley Reserve. So it's a whole one. So Scala di Turki with that white cliff is part of this whole thing. So basically from there all the way to Shaka is beautiful, unspoiled Caribbean style beaches that you have to walk to get to so um, to, to some of that. But that is where, to me, the most beautiful beaches are. If I want Lido's and stuff, I'd say go to Ragusa Marina or Monica Marina or Castellamar del Golfo, which is Alcamo Marina, really. So, so and honestly, Taramina looks beautiful, but the beach is not fantastic, if you ask me. Not great swimming. If, unless you're at one of the five-star hotels on the on Vienna Scanale, like the the Belmont Santa Andrea or the um, uh, Atlantis Bay or Mazzaro Palace, those have beautiful private beaches or nice nice Lido beaches. Okay, but um, Siracusa is swim off the sea wall, which is awesome. I mean, that to me is awesome. I love that. I, you know, no sand, it's great. So there's some advantages to both, right? So and then one of my favorite. Another place I love to go is Vindicati Nature Preserve, and this is uh, near Noto Avola area. That's southeastern Sicily. It's a beautiful, you know, unspoiled nature preserve kind of beach, and so um, th that's very beautiful place to go to. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Is it, is it reasonable to do Palermo uh, a day trip to Trapani from Palermo? Yes, absolutely. So, um, if an example, for example, I just was doing a trip last night and the people didn't want to move more than three times. And so I said, all right, well, we'll base you in Palermo and you'll do an Erice uh, salt flats day, you know, so morning you leave and you go out to Erice in the salt flats, maybe get a cannoli in Dattilo. And if you're really ambitious, you could do a wine winery in Alcamo, something like that. So you can it's a lot for one day to do that, but you certainly could do an Erice salt flats plus something else day, um, depending on, you know, and if you have a private driver who picks you up in Palermo and drops you up in Palermo at the end of the day after eight hours, then you're golden because then you don't have to worry about driving. So it's, it's absolutely reasonable. Um, let's see, let's see. Is it worth trying to learn simple Sicilian phrase to converse with merchants, drivers, et cetera? Um, <laughs> and I, and, uh, so this is a good question. That's a funny one. So Tom, this is a very nice question. So Amuni is always one that, you know, they love hearing us tourists say that the locals love, they North like love when they hear us say Amuni, um, which means let's go. And that you should absolutely learn. But for the most part, you're not going to worry about speaking Sicilian. Um, you're going to have, people are going to speak to you in Italian. Basically, that's, that's what that's what uh, I'm saying, because Sicilian is a language that is spoken between people who know each other. Um, so uh, 
you know, you talk to Sicil your family members in Sicilian or your, your buddies in Sicilian, anyone that you don't know or who doesn't know you, they're going to talk to you in Italian. So it's good to know salve. Salve is a, a, a more formal hello, salve. Okay, so you'll hear that a lot, especially in the South. Uh, buongiorno, of course, and buona no buonanotte is what you say before you go to sleep. Buonasera is more like what you would say when you enter a restaurant. And you'll hear something like buona giornata, and that's like what we would say when, when you say have a nice day, like at the end of seeing someone after saying buongiorno, when you're saying goodbye to them after you've had a nice conversation, you say buona giornata, have a nice day. And the same thing for buonasera, buona serata. So you'll hear that. But salve, you'll hear a lot. Um, prego, of course, is, you know, at, you know, it's basically means I pray or at your service, um, you know, can I help you essentially. So, um, so those are kind of the ones that you should know, uh, in Italian and, and I'm sure you can do, um, a quick Google search of like key Italian phrases. And I always give people a list of about 12 phrases that were in the, in my, what to expect document for people who are traveling and or experience Sicily. Um, so it's good to have a few of those. Your, under your belt. It's always nice to say grazie, grazie mille, prego, and per favore. Per favore, not por favor. <laughs> okay, that's Spanish. <laughs> or por favore, it's per favore, for favor. Per is for favor, per favore. So it's very good to know that as well. Um, how do you find a good driver? Linda, this is a good question. Um, what we call this in Italy is NCC. NCC, it means noleggiato con, con, conducente, okay, this is, a, it's like, it, it basically means private driving company, it's like the TLC in Manhattan, if you're familiar with, right, the Taxi Limousine Commission, so they have NCC, and that's a term used throughout Italy, and essentially it means a driver with a car, private driving company, or transportazione, transporto, so you can, um, Auto servizio is another one. Auto service, auto, auto servizio is another one. So these are ways to find driving companies. And like I said, um, they're all over the island. This is a very respected profession. Being a, being a tourist driver is a very respected profession in Sicily and in Italy. So um, by all means, you know, hire them. And one of the tips I'll tell you if you're planning your own trip is... Um, ask tell them you'll pay in cash okay so use whatsapp to communicate with everyone you know that's whatsapp is the way to to communicate with anyone and while you're negotiating with them say oh you know um i'll pay you in cash and they love that because they don't have to report it of course and then they'll give you a little bit of a discount probably a better price than if you say i have to pay by a credit card or because they're also going to want to pay by bank transfer and that's not something that we can do easily from the united states from your bank account in the us to pay by a bank transfer is not an easy thing you have to have uh you know it's not impossible there are companies like wise which used to be transferwise wise is one some people accept paypal not not too many um they do not have venmo release venmo from your brain that does not exist there um i use veeam that's a company that you can do bank transfers from veeam you can sign up for a veeam account and it takes a few days because they have to you know do all the banking stuff but it's possible and um zoom which is it's o o m that is a paypal company zoom X O O M. They are also international bank transfers. So if you have a PayPal account, you can get Zoom and maybe do some bank transfers that way. But certainly cash, <laughs> euros, do not show up with American dollars. Do not show up with American dollars to pay somebody. It is rude because <laughs> they cannot do anything with American dollars. My colleagues say to me, Allison, I have thousand dollars in American dollars from tips people have given me. I can't do anything with it. Can you, can I give you the thousand dollars and you bring me euro for it? I'm like, are you kidding me? You me take a thousand dollars like on my person. So, so do not, do not cur curse them. They have nowhere to go in Sicily to take that thousand dollars or any American dollars and transfer it. Okay. So do yourself a favor, do them a favor. Two things that are very important. Uh, before you leave, 
get to go to AAA or your bank and order euros for yourself. Do not show up with less than 250 euros in your pocket because if you have a problem with your ATM withdrawal, you want to have at least a day's worth of euros with you, right? So that's one of my tips of, is that 250 dollars 250 euro in cash you should have with you when you get off the plane, okay, that you brought with you. Now, if you live in New York City, for example, go to ANS. He's on 7th Avenue and 29th Street. He's Omar. Tell him Experience Sicily sent you. Omar is my buddy. I use him all the time to get euros. He's fantastic. So if you're in New York area, I recommend Omar at ANS Foreign Exchange on 7th Avenue, right near Penn Station. Um, he is the best in the in best rates in the city, as far as I can tell. And if you tell him experience Sicily sent you, he'll he'll really treat you well. Um, you know, work with your bank if you you know order euros from your bank, uh, and also watch watch the euro. Right now it's a dollar seven, dollar eight. That's the raw rate. You're not going to get that. You're going to get something more like a dollar nine, dollar ten, a dollar eleven right now, which is still very very good. Um, and then work it with your bank, T call them, do your travel thing, tell them you're going to use your ATM card in Italy during these dates. Okay. And then you can just go to an ATM machine and withdraw money as you need it so that you're not getting a lot of euros and then not spending them all. Take out 250, 500 euro at a time when you're there, depending on, of course, what you're going to be spending money on. You can use a credit card at restaurants, credit card at hotels, absolutely. But when you're talking about guides and drivers and tips, please have euros for them. Okay. And drivers, depending on the company, it, that'll depend on how you pay them. Um, is it easy to get money from ATMs and bankomats? Yes. Only use what is called a Bankomat. Bankomat is like, a, it is a brand and it is a network. And there are other reputable uh, banks that do not use Bankomat as their network, but I highly recommend identifying the banks that have the Bankomat symbol because you're gonna get the best rate and it's safest. Do not use tourist ATM machines. I don't recommend it. First of all, they'll gouge you on the rate. They'll charge you a huge fee, first of all, and then they'll gouge you on the rate. And then second of all, because it's sitting on the street, you don't know who's been messing with that ATM machine. So I don't recommend, you know, they're usually navy colored with bright uh, yellow ATM on it. Those are the ones to avoid. Unfortunately, Palermo Center, it's very hard to find a bank. For whatever reason, in the, in the historic center, it's just impossible to find a bank. There's one on Via Roma near <laughs> near the, the San Domenico Church. Okay, so it's a BNL or something like that on Via Roma. Um, that's where you'll near the post office. It's like across the street from the post office on Via Roma in Palermo. That's where you'll find a good ATM in Palermo, by the way. But otherwise, you'll find bankomats everywhere. Palermo is just the one place so you think it'd be easy and it's not. There's also Banco di Sicilia on Via Roma at, at, at um, Victoria Van Manuel. So um, so you, you, that's a you know big bank. So you can probably go in there and there's a bank on that. So use the bank on that. What's the current tipping culture at restaurants? Okay, so tipping. Um, but let me answer this other question first because tipping is a bigger subject. And then we're going to close down because I am so... <laughs> Um, let's see. Any experience in the uh, uh, Italian island south of Sicily worth seeing? Okay, so John, yeah, the um, Aeolian islands without a doubt, Egadi islands without a doubt, these are beautiful, they're easy day trips from Trapani. You can get even by uh, excursion from Trapani to, to go the Aeol to the Egadi islands. Ustica is three hours by ferry, old, slow ferry north of Palermo. It's one of my favorite places. It's a beautiful island, very remote, Ustica, um, very down to earth uh, and easily accessible in the summer by hydrofoil, which is the high speed aliscafo, we call it in Italian. Then you have Pentaleria, you have Lampedusa and Linosa. These are the South Island, South of Sicily. Uh, they're actually closer to Africa than they are to Italian stuff. And then there's Malta. Malta is its own country and Malta is like a whole thing unto itself. And I would recommend no less than three days in Malta, by the way, because there's so much to see in Malta. Five is ideal, apparently. I have yet to go there, but I know a lot about it. Anyway, Blinosa, Pantelleria, and Lampedusa. Lampedusa gets a lot of attention because it's the doorway to Europe from Africa with a lot of the immigrants coming through there. Do not let this sway you from visiting Lampedusa. It is absolutely beautiful there. 
again, I haven't been there, but I can tell you from the photos I've seen and from people I've spoken to and my friends who who travel there, um, you know, the immigration stuff is on one part of the island and is like really separate from all the tourist stuff. So you can really travel in Lampedusa without problems or not Lampedusa. What is it called? Now I'm losing my mind. Lampedusa. Yes, Lampedusa versus Favignana, which is part of the Agadi Islands. Um, Pantelidia is beautiful, black volcanic island, really interesting, highly recommend it. And Linosa is very small. And if you want to be on a remote small island, like Caribbean, Maldives kind of place, that would be where to go is Linosa. It's really stunning there too. Um, okay, so tur current tipping culture and restaurants in general. Okay, so tipping. You do not need to tip at restaurants. It is not like the United States. However, it is very kind to leave a couple euro on the table per person, okay, as a gesture of thanks for good service. But it is not expected. 20% definitely not. Up to 10% maybe, okay? This is a very, a topic for me that's, frustrating because we are Americans and because Americans don't know any better, they've been tipping and now it's become expected of us that we tip and they get upset when we don't. Meanwhile, if it was German or French or Italian, they wouldn't, or Spanish, they would never expect a tip from one of those, one of us, right? If we were German, French, French, Spanish, whatever. They don't tip and they wouldn't expect to tip, but because we're Americans, then they expect us to tip. <laughs> so it's really frustrating. So restaurants, one or two euro per person on the table is very nice. If you're at the coffee bar and you leave 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cent piece on the coffee bar after your coffee, they're like thrilled. They think it's very nice, okay? Drivers definitely tip. Especially if he's not an owning his own company, I would say think about 10% of what the cost of the private driving was. So if you did a 500 euro day with someone, probably a nice 50 euro tip would be great. They would be thrilled. That's really, really nice. Not expected. You could still do 25 or 30 euro and it's very kind as well. Okay. Then um, guides is a whole other thing because again, this is where I get very frustrated. And I had, I've had multiple conversations with my colleagues about this because they look at me like, why don't you, why? You know? <laughs> so they, again, if we were not American, they wouldn't expect a tip from us, but because we're American, they're expecting a tip. So anywhere between 15 and 20% or 25% of what you paid for the service might be expected from an American in cash. <laughs> I hate it. It makes me so frustrated because I'm like, why don't you just charge me? Because look, because would we, I don't know, when I do my tour, I just, because when I do my tours in New York City, the cannoli crawl, I don't expect a tip. When I get a tip, it's like, wow, that's great. This is a little thing in Sicily. So it's, so, so definitely bring cash. Have small bills with you. One of my big, big tips is do whatever you can. You're going to get a lot of 50 bills from the ATM machine, okay? If you go to Omar or some other exchange place in, in your town, see if you can get the smallest bills possible. 20s, definitely. 10s and 5s if you can. And when you get 10s and 5s, for you know, try and do whatever you can wherever you are with your money to get small bills, as many small bills and small change as possible. And they're gonna try and get small change out of you whenever you go to a store. They're gonna say, oh, do you have any, do you have any two, 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 fifty? And keep them for yourself, keep them for your tips. Do whatever you can to hold on to those small bills to use them for tips because the last thing you wanna do is get caught when you only have a 50 euro bill and you paid 150 euro already for this tour and now you have to tip 50 euro. Okay, so the, these are my real insider tips about how to deal with, with that. So so I hope so. tipping is very complicated. And I have a whole bunch of stuff on my website, experiencesily.com about tipping. So you can go there and look for that. What electrical charging devices should we bring? Okay, so this is another good question. Um, I wish I brought pictures uh, of them because I, I should have them to show you right here. But I, I, that's a good thing to have for my next 
my next presentation. Um, if you want to wait a minute, I'll <laughs> I'm in the bedroom, but um, so note that your your modern devices, okay, your modern USB devices, okay, they have, um, you know, this this thing, okay, generally it, it can transform the energy flow. So all you need, you don't need one of those fancy transformers that you used to have back in the day. You just need an adapter. And the best one for Sicily is Southern Italy, it's called. It says Southern Italy. And it's a two-prong or a grounded one. I recommend having both. For your computer laptop, if you have a, a, a grounded plug, you want to use a grounded plug. So staples you can order online. You can go onto Amazon, order online um, to get the, the adapters. But you don't need to get transformer. Leave your hair dryers at home, please. Do not bring your hair dryer. Um, if you, I have a travel iron, for example, and it's a small one, but it has a switch on it, so I can switch the um, the the stuff. But I will tell you, most places, like we Americans, we expect to go somewhere and there's an iron in the room. There, there's not going to be an iron in the room in a hundred percent. Like I've seen it in Airbnbs, but other than that, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to see an iron and ironing board in the room because they don't want you to go and pay a lady to do it. That's part of it. It's like, it's a job for somebody. Why would we, have you? why would you iron your own stuff when it's a job someone else will do for you? That's sort of the thinking. Um, so there's that. So Olympia is asking me if she's hiking. Do I prefer Lodzingaro or uh, the other hike I did on my last trip? Okay, so. Uh, um, I think it's just a matter of the loop. I liked this hike I sent you by text, um, which is at Mont Cofano, um, because it, it is an all day hike. It's a six, a six hours probably it could be. Um, so bring your lunch and all that stuff, but, and water. So it's a nice one because it's a loop. Lodzingaro, you're going to go in and go out the same place. That's the one thing of Lodzingaro and it won't necessarily be loop. You have to look at the maps, unfortunately. So, but Zingaro is actually stunning. It's that whole area of Chapani province is really stunning. And I did another hike that I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you because Nani was leading it. It was 20 kilometers and so 12 miles so it was from Sagesta to Castellamare and that is possible to do and totally navigable if you have a map it's totally navigable but that's a really long day it's a very long day so lots of mountains to climb and stuff like that so and, um, and we don't we don't need a guide on either of those we can no, follow we can find our no, own way. There are signs the yes. thing about the signs for hiking um is that they tell you like Castellamare this way and they tell you like 1.5 or 2.5. That's not kilometers or miles, that is time. So I was like, what time? And Nani was like, exactly. We're trying to get them to change the sign. Cause it's like, well, 1.5 hours for who to walk? Depending on how tall you are, you know, like your stride is pretty, like I'm tall, so I'm, you know, so that's the thing. So be careful about how the signs read um, because it's not, it's not done by distance. It's done by how long somebody th thinks it's going to take you to walk that far, right? So there you go. That's important to know. So you'll see the signs are, they're white with red lines or red, red like banners. And then they tell you like directions. And so definitely uh, what I found is like, you can look on the internet for, for these, um, these trails. So do a little homework before you go. Um, and I'm not sure if like an all trails app or something like that might work there. I don't know. I have, I actually have, I've been so reliant on going with friends that I not that information. I haven't done too much by myself. So, so, um, sign off at 9 30. You guys are awesome for hanging out with me this long and, and, uh, and this conversation tonight. Who else can I answer for anyone? Last, last call for questions. Anything. Thank you, Allison. It was great. All right. Thank you. Thanks for all being here. And I hope that you'll consider coming with me on a small group tour. Um, and uh, again, I've got consultation service, which I'm about to close the door on for the year because I have enough clients for the year to sustain us through the year. It's so busy. And then, of course, the phone consultation service is something that I'll still be doing some of that um, on a time timed out basis. But uh, thank you all for joining me. It was a pleasure to see you this evening. I am so excited that you all want to travel to Sicily and I hope that I'll see you at some of my events and maybe I'll, I'll be doing a couple more online things in the, in the next few months and we'll see you again, I hope. All right. So.
Thank you so much. Good night. See you Thank online. you so much. Elsewhere. Good night. This is great, night. Allison. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Bon Thank you so much. Bon yeah. Bon